010111, boot from ISO image. Now that we created a normal user account on the ESX server with secure shell access, we can use that account to copy our ISO file or any other files from the physical desktop machine that we have over to the ESX server. So let's go ahead and SSH in and copy our ISO file with the operating system over to the ESX server VMFS partition. We can log into the service console using a secure shell client such as PuTTY, Secure CRT, or WinSCP. I would recommend using WinSCP, which gives you graphical interface, so that you can drag and drop your ISO file into the VMFS partition, which is my preferred way of connecting and managing files that are sitting on the ESX server. Initially, I'm going to open up my browser and download WinSCP onto my desktop. Click. This will trigger the installation of WinSCP on my workstation. I'm going to quickly skip through the install process, and once it's finished, I'm going to fire up WinSCP, log in, and copy the file. At the login screen, I'll type in the user in a previous movie and click Log In. Once logged in, I can browse the content of ESX Server Local and Shared Drivers. Here on the right side, we can change ESX Server, the path to the local or shared drive we would like to access. I'll change the directory to Root, and then I will select the VMFS folder, and then go to Volumes, which is where all local and shared volumes are listed, and then I'll double-click on the ISO images, which in my case happens to be a shared SAN LUN. You can put your own ISO files anywhere you want, but the best way is to create a separate volume on a shared LUN and put all the ISO files there, so that you can access them from all of your ESX hosts. Now here on the left side, I'm going to change the directory to the root of C drive, where I have my ISO image file residing. I'll click on the ISO file and drag and drop it to the left side of WinSCP interface in order to copy that ISO file over to the ESX server. So now that we've got our ISO image over to our ESX server, we can mount it and boot from it with our virtual machine. You only have to do that once, and really you're going to copy all of your ISO images over to your ESX server once because you only have so many operating systems. And then you'll be done, and then you can just mount it real quick and it's much, much quicker and it's faster to build your server. I'm going to right click on my test server 1 and I'll scroll down and let's select edit settings, and I'm going to highlight my CD DVD drive and now I'm going to go down to Data Store ISO File, select Browse, and we put it in VM Images slash Tools slash ISO Images, and this is the one I copied over. Click OK. And this is key. You want to check Connect It Power On. If you don't do that, then it's not going to see the ISO image. Click OK. And now we can actually right-click on the server. Let's go ahead and open the console because we want to see it boot up. Expand it out. And I'll just press the Play button to power it on and it's going to power up. And notice that our option for our CD-ROM isn't up here because we've already mounted it to a particular ISO image. And it boots directly into the boot CD. So that's the best way, I think, to build your servers from scratch. Now what we're going to get into later on is actually building our server images and then cloning them off because really, you don't want to go through this build process every single time you want a server. So we'll take a look at that further down the line. But this is how you would build it from scratch initially.